So good to be with you today, and thank you, Jason, for those words. Um, yes, after eight weeks, you do start to get to know one another, and, and uh, I've got to know him a little bit more, and he's a good man, too, and uh, he really cares for his family, and, and uh, so, I'm, in fact, uh, let's welcome the church family, wherever you may be today, uh, whether you're, uh, you're Mernda or Craigieburn or Bunjur or wherever you are, we welcome you to church. We really believe that God's going to uh, speak to you today. And maybe you're listening to this a little bit later on uh, because you haven't been able to, to tune in uh, uh, online, uh, uh, live, but we just pray that God will speak into your situation. But just before I come to the Word of God, and uh, during lockdown, it's been our privilege to be able to welcome uh, new babies uh, into the church community, and uh, we're thrilled, Lois and I are absolutely thrilled to be able to welcome uh, another grandchild into our family, our first grandson, uh, born to our eldest daughter, Connie and Miguel. So everybody say, Connie, Miguel, congratulations, and uh, we're just thrilled uh, for them as well. So uh, I think there's a picture, I'm, I'm sure that will come up, cute as a button, and uh, I'm not sure who he looks like, maybe he's got a little bit of me, I'm not too sure, but anyway, uh, we're, we're glad that you're here with us today. We're continuing a series of messages uh, on uh, Spirit, uh, led by Holy Spirit Impulse, and that comes from the Passion Translation. Uh, I'm going to read it in a more traditional translation, it's in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, for those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And uh, you've heard uh, two wonderful messages uh, by Pastor Lois and Pastor Mark. Really did a great job. In fact, we need to put our hands together. They did a really good job. Each of them so different. Every one of these messages are different, coming from a different angle. There's so much to talk about the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit wants to empower you in every area of your life. He, he didn't leave us to fend for ourselves, but He gave us divine power. And so today, I'm going to take another tack. And I want you to turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 1, and we're going to start reading from verse 9. I'm going to be looking at Jesus' baptism and see what we can glean from there. So here we go. Mark chapter 1, verse 9. It says, In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up, out of the water, I just want to make mention there, he came up out of the water, that speaks very clearly about full immersion, by the way, he just didn't have a little sprinkle, he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. There are three things I see here today. There's a lot more, but I want to focus on three things that are essential for a life that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. I want you to notice those three things. Number one, a voice from heaven speaking. Number two, the heavens parting. Number three, the Holy Spirit descending. We have three decisions that we need to make, and I'd like to lead you through this, and I pray that you'll join me today. Number one, decision. I will hear the voice from heaven. Everybody say that. I will hear the voice from heaven. Jesus comes up out of the water, and in Mark chapter 1 verse 11 says, and the voice from heaven spoke saying, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You know, there are a lot of voices that, we, that can speak to us, that can talk to us, but the only voice we really need to hear is the voice of God. And Jesus standing in the middle of the Jordan River hears God speak to him, God the Father. He says, I'm proud of you, son. I'm, I'm really delighted. I love you dearly. This is after Jesus is now 30 years of age. He has been supporting Mary. He's supporting the family. He's faced numerous difficulties and temptations, and yet he has never turned away from God's path for him. He's never got distracted. And now here he is. He's humbly submitting himself for water baptism, not because he needed to repent of sin, but he's being obedient to the Father. He's, pub he's making a public commitment of his mission here on earth, and he's an example to us about being baptized in water. In fact, even to this day, we still look at Jesus. We still look at him as our example. Again, being baptized by full immersion. 
and God speaks to him. And you might say today, it's okay for the father to speak to him but, and say, you're my beloved son, I'm pleased with you, but I mess up all the time. Uh, I mean, I say the wrong thing. <laughs> Have I got anybody here agreeing with me? Uh, my mind goes to places where it shouldn't, and, and, and I fail my own standards, never mind the standards of God. Uh, I feel the weakness of my own humanity. I don't think God is going to be saying that to me. Uh, I, I've got some super great news for you today, and it's simply this that our standing with God, and you've heard me say this time and time again, our standing with God is not because of our perfect record, but because of Christ's perfect record. That's a good time to give God some praise there, because you need to be reminded of that, otherwise you'll become religiously neurotic. You'll become full of fear all the time when you make a mistake and think, oh no, I've lost my standing with God. No, your standing with God is because of Jesus' perfect record. Because you've accepted Christ into your life, because you've submitted yourself to His Lordship, you have right standing with God. Everybody put that in the chat. That's a good thing to put down. I have right standing with God. Thank God for that. And, and uh, this is why in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, we read these words. It's Apostle Paul, uh, sorry, Apostle John speaking. You see, he says, see what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. Everybody say, that is what we are. We are the sons and daughters of the living God. That's why what God the Father said to Jesus, He also says to us. In the hearing of every principality and power, in the hearing of every authority on earth, He boldly shouts it out from heaven, You are my son. You are my daughter, and I am pleased with you. In fact, this is another amazing truth. The same affection that God the Father has for His Son, He has for us. Now, this, this blows my mind. Jesus Himself said this. In, in John 17, 23, He says, Father, You have loved them even as You have loved me. Let that sink into your spirit. Do you know how much God the Father loves His Son? He loves Him without limit, without measure. And that is the same kind of love that God has for you. You are my son. You are my daughter. Put your own name in there. John, Mark, Jason, Aaron. Put your name. I take delight in you. You bring me great joy. I love you deeply. So the first lesson we need to learn is we need to hear the voice from heaven. Everybody say the voice from heaven. Number two, I will believe in the supernatural. Not only will I hear the voice from heaven, I will believe in the supernatural. Mark chapter 1, verse 10. And he came up out of the water, and he saw the heavens being torn open. Now, whenever you see in Scripture the, the whole concept of the, uh, the opening of the heavens, it means that God is about to act, and God is about to speak. How many of you know that we, there is another realm beyond that which is natural? Give me a bit of a nod of the head. Say Yes. Okay, Jesus saw something, Jesus felt something that nobody else around him felt and saw. He saw into the realm of the spirit that the, the heavens being torn open, the realm of the supernatural, the realm of miracles, the realm of the Holy Spirit. Now we know this because the scripture teaches us in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, for we are not fighting against, you know the scripture, we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities, listen, the next few words, in the unseen world. Pastor Mark, I think it was last week actually, spoke to us about the dangers of dabbling into a certain part of this dark world. Astrology, psychic phenomena, tarot cards, evil eyes, spiritism, mediums. You, if you dabble in that area, you actually are opening yourself up to a dark world. 
And though there are many fakes out there and charlatans that try to take your money, let me tell you something else. If you have that kind of encounter, you're not speaking, you're not speaking to the dead. You are actually having an encounter, the Scripture teaches us, with demons. So that's why you have to be really careful about this whole realm. You don't want to uh, open yourself up to that world because that world will enslave you. Uh, in John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. No matter how good it looks on the outside, that's his intention. That's where he'll take you back. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You know, whenever you see gross evil in the world, unspeakable evil, you need to understand that there is a mastermind behind that. There is somebody who's influencing, somebody who's manipulating hu fallen humanity. You look at what's happening in Afghanistan and other parts of the world, cruelty beyond comprehension. Why would you do that? Understand there are unseen forces occurring. I don't know if you've ever walked into a home and you felt an eerie presence. Has that ever happened to you? Kind of go, wow, what is, ha what is here? What's something strange about this home. What could be happening is that you are being tuned into, a, uh, you've got spiritual discernment into an unseen world. Now, sometimes we get it wrong, but God can give us a, a capacity to understand this world. You see, every time you worship, every time you pray, Every time you open up the Word of God and it comes alive to you, every time you listen to the impulse of the Holy Spirit, you are delving into the beautiful light side of the spiritual realm that God has for us. And the Word of God can give you insight into that. Let me give you a story in the Bible that really brings this out. In 2 Kings chapter 6, we have a story. How many of you love stories? I, I love Bible stories. It, it, sometimes a story paints a, a, a thousand words. Elisha and Gehazi, in this particular circumstance, are being surrounded by the Syrian army. Gehazi is freaking out. He is losing his mind. He's paralyzed with fear because they are totally outnumbered. Elijah is relaxed. He's calm. What's going on? He sees something that Gehazi does not see. And so he prays. He says, Lord, open up his eyes. And in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17, we read this. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the servant, and he saw the hills full of horses, chariots of fire. Obviously, we're not talking about a natural army here. All around Elisha. You see, all around you, there is an invisible realm. There are angels on assignment at God's command. You know, sometimes protecting you. Look at the life of Jesus after the temptations in the Garden of Gethsemane. You have sometimes protecting, sometimes encouraging, sometimes preventing danger, sometimes orchestrating things to occur. Things that are occurring, they're involved in your life. These angels on assignment are involved in your life they, at, a, at a level that you will never understand on this side of eternity, but they are there working on mission for you. Why? Because what we see is only temporary, but what we don't see is eternal. You see, we don't live in a closed universe. We don't live in a universe where God can't interrupt. God can break in any time, any way He likes because He is God Almighty and He has ways of doing that. Say, I will believe, say it out loud, I will believe in the supernatural, in the supernatural. Jesus comes up out of the water and the heavens are opened it's the realm of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you a couple of stories. One of our long-term um, attenders at church uh, was by the name of Philip Yanensky. So many of you would not have met him because he always came to the first service, the 8.30 service. He was in the church for more than 40 years. And about two to three weeks ago, I had the honor of uh, presiding over his funeral 
and was able to learn more about him. I, I like to hear eulogies because you can learn so much about a person's life that you don't know. Uh, there, there was so much about his life that I just didn't know because I wasn't around. And Jim, his son, gave, a wonderful, um, hi, gave wonderful highlights concerning his dad's life. And I heard the story. I never heard this before. You see, Philip Yanetsky grew up in Macedonia, a war-torn country, and he and a number of people decided that they would flee the country, and they organized a couple of trucks on the other side of the border. If they were able to make it across the border of Macedonia, there would be two trucks waiting for them. And by the grace of God, they, they, they got through the guards, and, and everything seemed to be going well. And then the two trucks were before them, and Philip was asked to go into one of the trucks. And as soon as he was asked to do that, there's this strong impression inside him and says, don't enter the truck. Don't go there. It's very strong. Don't trust the truck driver. And it was so strong that he hopped out of the line and he went into the second truck. He watched with amazement as the truck, the first truck, the driver drove them back into Macedonia. You see, it was a plant, and his truck went on to freedom. What happened that day is that Philip tapped into the unseen world, the world of the Holy Spirit. He saw something, he heard something, he felt something that others could not. And today, his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren are living in this beautiful country because one man just simply heard the voice of God. Now, he wasn't a super saint. He wasn't a preacher. He was, he was, not, he, he was not a priest. He was just an ordinary believer who was attuned to the Holy Spirit. That's what God wants to do in your life. That's what God wants to do in my life. You see, there's more to life than what we see naturally, what we, what we touch, what we taste, what we smell, what we hear. That's the physical realm. There's a spiritual realm where we can also, metaphorically speaking, we can touch, we can sense, we can taste, we can smell, we can, we can, we can delve into that realm. And in that realm, Luke chapter 18 verse 17 says, what is impossible for man, you know the rest, is possible with God. You know, I've come to understand this, that the things I go through are far more spiritual than what I can imagine. And so I've learned to appeal to God, no matter what I'm going through, to appeal to God. There are forces that, that are involved in my life and in our lives, and the only way is we go to God in prayer, with faith, with humility, say, God, I don't know what's going on here, but I ask you to do the impossible. I ask you to fight for me. I ask you, Lord, that you will show up strongly in my life. About two weeks ago, and I've got permission to share this story, I went for a walk with one of our Malaysian brothers. His name is Albert Yu. Hello, everybody say, hello, Albert. How are you? I hope you're listening. You don't know I'm telling the story today, but I asked permission from him. And he told me the story. We, we actually, what happened is we had a cup of coffee and a prego. That's one of the cafe, coffee shops just down the road. And we went for a walk around Norris Bank. And as the conversation goes, I was just talking to him. Oh, how did you come to Christ? And I didn't know this. His mother was a very staunch Buddhist. And she did not want the family to have anything to do with the Christian faith. In fact, when Albert went to study in London, she said, if you go to a Christian church, I'm going to call you back to Malaysia. All good. What happened, however, one day she became very ill. And she contracted a blood condition which was incurable. She went to the doctors. She's not getting any better. She prayed to Buddha. She got worse. It was really, really tough for her. But through the health system, she was assigned a doctor. And the doctor just happened to be a Christian. And he's very forthright about his faith. He says, I'll treat you. And he asked this question, Madam, do you mind if I pray for you? 
You, you don't have to, but I, I believe in a God of miracles. Do you mind if I pray for you in Jesus' name? And she said, well, she's desperate. She says, okay, well, if you want to, you can. He laid hands on her in Jesus' name. And Albert says to me that within a very short period of time, her condition completely reversed. It was a miracle. Not only that, her mom gave her life to the Lord. She led her children to the Lord. And one of the sons today is still a pastor in Malaysia. You see, we believe in the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. I think we need to give God praise. God is a good God. He is still doing miracles today. Say, I believe in the supernatural. Everybody say that. I believe in the supernatural. The heavens opened. And God saw, Jesus saw the things, the realm of the Spirit. I wonder, I, I was just thinking about this moment. I believe that there's faith in the room today, wherever you may be, because even though you're in one room, somebody else in another room, you've got faith, they've got faith together, we've got faith. Let's believe, let's pray together right now. Let's believe God for, if you've got a need in your life, if you need a miracle, we serve a God of the impossible. We serve a God where the Holy Spirit still gives out gifts of healing. And he is able to, to demolish strongholds. And so I want you to maybe raise one hand. Let's pray together. Let's pray in faith. Let's believe for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and breakthrough. Father, in Jesus' name, in G just bow your heads in prayer. Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray for miracles. We pray for healing to be dispersed. We pray, Lord God, for deliverance. Everybody say deliverance. From demonic power, from oppression, from depression, from possession. Father, we pray from deliverance, from addiction in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord God, for salvation for that, for that son, for that daughter that, that is lost at the moment. Lord God, that you reach out to them, that you'll draw them by your spirit in Jesus' name. For that husband, for that wife, for that, for that uncle, for that auntie, Lord God. Lord, that you'll do a work. Holy Spirit, begin to work, Lord God, in their life. Do what you need to do, Lord, to bring them back to yourself. Lord God, we pray for the impossible. Everybody say the impossible. For that which is impossible with man is possible with God. Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the name that we sang about in the choruses today, oh God, the worship songs, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the name above every name. Let miracles be done. Deliverance. Healing. Everybody say, I believe in the supernatural. Let me summarize. I hear... I will hear the voice from heaven. Our first decision, you are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. I will believe in the supernatural and the heavens open. And the third is I will receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 1 verse 10 says, And when he had come up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open. Just stop there for a moment before I come to the next phrase. Those of you who love words, the words torn is the same word that is used when, when the veil was torn between the holy and the holy of holies after Jesus came back to life from the dead and, it, and there was a, a gaining of access into God's presence. And then it says, and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. Now, it wasn't a dove, but descended on him like a dove. You see, when you receive Christ into your life, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you. You cannot be a Christian. The Spirit of Christ is not in you. In fact, we read that in Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But there's more. Everybody say more. Write that in the chat. More. There's more for you. And I'll show it to you. In the book of Acts, Jesus says to his disciples who were born again by the Spirit of God, they had the Spirit of God in them, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But you shall receive power. Everyone say power. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. And then in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, you know the account. There's a rushing mighty wind, and 
tongues of fire, and they began, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues. And can I just say, that ought to be the natural thing that we expect when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, that, that there's a manifestation of the supernatural language flowing through us. But beyond that initial infilling, in Acts chapter 4, 6, Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 11, Acts chapter 13, over and over, we keep on hearing these words, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were filled. These are the same people in Acts chapter 2, and they're filled with the Holy Spirit. I'll give you one of them. Acts chapter 4, verse 31, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they continued to speak the Word of God with boldness. You see, the the infilling of the Holy Spirit is not a one-time event. It is a, cons- a constant pursuit ought to be of our lives. I was listening to Marvel talking about when he was in his bedroom and, and just singing to God and the Holy Spirit fell upon him in such a natural way. You don't have to be in church. In fact, I, I, I'm of the belief that every day you can, be, you can receive that fresh anointing. You can receive that fresh infilling. It's inside, so it ought to be a constant pursuit. It's essential for our empowering. You've got a task that you want to do. Say, Lord, fill me for this task. You've got an interview you've got, to, you've got to go to. Say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me boldness. You've got somebody you want to witness to. Lord, God, give me the words. Holy Spirit, fill me with yourself so I have the words to speak. And whatever, wherever you find yourself, say, Lord, fill me again. Fill me again. Everybody say, fill me again. Maybe a, a few graphs will help here. The first one, even though we can all be believers in Christ, you notice that this particular graph has got, it's got Christians at different levels. It, it doesn't mean they're not Christians, but we can be at different levels of closeness with God. Our experience with the Holy Spirit, we, we know that. Some people are a little bit higher than others, and that, 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 that can be the way it is. And then here's another graph. This is the normal way in which our, we grow. Uh, over a period of time, over a period of years, that as you read the Word of God, you notice that there's, it just goes up like this. As you read the Word of God, as you fellowship with other believers, as you, uh, as, as you listen to God's Word being preached, as you serve God with a spiritual gift, you begin to grow. And there's a few hiccups. Sometimes you have a little bit of a downer and then you pick yourself up. But generally speaking, you're going upwards. But, when you receive a fresh infilling, a significant fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, uh, you ex- this is the way it can be explained. There is a growth spike. Everybody say growth spike. Uh, that's that's the, why we've got an A and a B. You notice there's a straight line up. It was supposed to go this way, but there's a straight line up. I, I love the way Wayne Grudem, who's a, a very respected theologian, puts it. He, he, he describes it in this this matter, there's a straight line up, a growth spike, similar to what happens in the natural realm. Now, most of you would know that we look after, I'll give you this illustration. We, we look after Harley, and, and it's just wonderful to see the growth in her and, and maturity. And, and one area that she just couldn't grasp is the name Nonna. Now, I'm Nonna, right? I'm the grandfather. Lois is Nonna. Well, she just couldn't get it. And it's like all the time, she's saying, no, 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 no. I think she's talking about me. No, she's not talking about me. She's actually talking about me and Lois. Anyway, about two weeks ago, we're pushing her on the swing, and then all of a sudden she goes, no, no. Both of us heard it. Did she just say, no, no? No, she didn't. Come on, say, no, no. She wouldn't say it again. So pushing, pushing, no, no. She got it. We, we got it on video. Suddenly, there's this growth spike. She, what she couldn't do before, now she can do. And that's the same. I know there's a bit of a crude example there. It's the same when you receive a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. It accelerates growth in your life. You say, how does that happen? Well, you see, it's not just the infilling, but it's the process. Because as you come to God and you say, God, I come to you and I ask you to forgive me. You repent of your sin. And as you come and you yield yourself more to God, say, God, more of you and less of me. And as the Holy Spirit falls upon you, in that there's this supernatural acceleration. 
there's an acceleration that takes place that. You see, Mark chapter 1, verse 10, and when he had come up out of the water, the Holy Spirit fell upon him. Millions of Christians around the world will testify to that infilling of the Spirit of God on a constant basis. And they use one word, many times the same word over and over. And this is the word, greater. Everybody say greater. Greater. There's a great, they say, I don't know. There's just a greater demonstration of the miraculous in my life. A greater authority over principalities and powers. A greater occurrence of miracles. A greater sense of of His presence. Do you know that as God's people, we're called to be people of His presence. We're not just called to know a bunch of facts, but but this is what Exodus chapter 33 verse 16 says. What sets us apart is that we have God's presence with us. And when people come to church, they say, God is in this place. You see, when, that's what happens when a, a church is filled with the Holy Spirit. We've got people there filled with the Holy Spirit. A greater boldness to share about Jesus. A greater frequency in answered prayer. Why? Because now you're praying according to the will of God. That's why there's more answers to prayer. A greater connection in worship. You're not just singing songs. You're in the Holy of Holies. A greater understanding of the Scriptures that come alive. Come alive for you a greater sensitivity to the impulses of the Holy Spirit. Greater, greater. Everybody say that, greater, greater, greater. That's what the Holy Spirit has for you. I don't know about you, but I want greater. Anybody else there? I want greater. I want more, Lord. I want more. Anybody else? Lift up your hand and say, I want more. I want more. I want more of you. Less of me. We're going to pray in a moment. But just before we pray, let's prepare our hearts. Would you just bow your heads in prayer? There's no distance with God, by the way. I want you to shut out everybody else, wherever you might find yourself. And pray this prayer. Lord, I repent of any sin that you bring to me. Just allow a moment, just a moment don't have to go digging too deep but if God brings something to your heart, say Lord forgive me, help me to change my attitude, I'm struggling with this thing cleanse my heart cleanse my heart here's the next prayer as we prepare ourselves Lord I fully yield myself to you less of me more of you. Say that. Less of me. More of you. Less of me. More of you. Lift up your hands. Now fall upon us, Lord. I pray right now. Fall upon us. Fall upon me, Lord. Fresh and filling. I want greater. I want more. I want more of your spirit in my life. I want greater manifestation of who you are. Fill me again, fill me again, fill me again. Say that, fill me again. Holy Spirit, fill me again.